Welcome back. We do apologize for those inconveniences. Of course, we have sorted those out. We continue our conversation that is concerning the school feeding program. That's it with Mr. Simon as well as Mr. Joab. Now, Mr. Simon, you are talking about the fact that you know the, the program has transformed from merely over 70,000 uh, beneficiaries in 1996 and to over 460,000 beneficiaries up to date. Yes. Yes. Um, yeah. The, the, in addition to that, the program has also been you know, uh, able to attract or, or to keep learners uh, in schools. We have uh, over 90 uh, percent um, enrollment in our schools, uh, especially at the foundational level, as the primary level. We, we actually, uh, as a ministry, have experienced a high, you know, enrollment rate uh, in, that, in that regard. And, uh, one of the attributing factors is that uh, we have the uh, incentives that uh, you know we are providing to our schools to, to pull uh, these children to attend schools and to stay in schools. Because this is one of the objectives of school feeding program, to actually have these kids, uh, children in schools, uh, attend, uh, uh, realize their potentials and complete their primary and secondary education become you know, productive citizens of this country. Okay. Now, Mr. <coughs> Job, we know that the objective of the school feeding program is uh, threefold. The fact that it enhances school participation, as Mr. Mbubo also indicated, it enhances uh, health and nutrition in learners and support smallholder farmers. How effective has this objection been since inception, especially from a strategic partner such as the World Food Program? Uh, thank you very much for that question. Uh, one of the enhancing, um, complementing um, component uh, of the Namibia school feeding program is the homegrown school feeding, where we are sourcing locally. Uh, and what you have noticed is that uh, by doing so, we have been able to uh, encourage production, uh, provide market access for the smallholder farmers, and uh, also uh, uh, this also has, uh, you know, because of that, it has reduced uh, post-harvest losses. And also um, for the benefit of the learner in terms of enhancing nutrition and uh, health, uh, we, have, we have diversified the meals uh, for, for, the, for, the, for the learners in the schools. Now, Mr. Mpupa, talk to us about some of those challenges that the program has faced since implementation. Um, yeah, the challenges have been quite uh, many, uh, but I can mention a few. Uh, one of the challenges has been the, the, the fact that the the school feeding program is basically made up of the soft porridge that we are providing to our learners. And this is a maize brand that has been blended with three ingredients, that's protein, salt, and sugar. Protein is not locally available in the Namibian market, so it's always sourced outside. So we have been experiencing this logistical, uh, I mean, supply chain issues where suppliers or contracted service providers were not able or are not able to source this on time and therefore causes delays in the you know branding of maize meal and therefore we sometimes find ourselves uh, our schools do not have anything in stock to feed the learners that's one of the the the, 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 the one of the serious challenges that is that we have been affecting i mean experiencing secondly it's uh, the other issue is uh, the uh, the, the poor infrastructure of school feeding in our schools uh, because we, since this program started, uh, you, you know, uh, the, the ministry uh, have not really been able to provide, uh, you know, sufficient infrastructure in terms of where this, the, 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 the school feeding pro program is being uh, provided in terms of cooking and serving the learners. And sometimes when it's raining, uh, learners, you know, will go hungry because, you know, firewood is wet and all that kind of thing. So, in addition to that, we have also been uh, experiencing the issue of, uh, you know, not, not really getting the accurate information, uh, data correction, uh, for us to be able to coordinate the program properly. Hence, we have decided to embark on this journey to bring nurses uh, into being so that we are able to, you know, uh, correct information uh, better from our schools and be able to have information that we need 
and coordinate the activities of the program. That is also going to assist us with monitoring what is happening in our schools as far as school feeding program is concerned uh, in terms of stock levels, in terms of other challenges that, that schools are experiencing. Nurses uh, being launched, this will be able to help us right from head office where we are. We could zoom in in the different uh, schools or different regions and be able to pick up what are the challenges that the schools are experiencing. Okay. Yeah. Now, Mr. Job, we understand that today they will be launching the Nambia School Feeding Program Management System that <coughs> ensured nurses. Maybe for those that are watching, uh, we know that the emphasis will be on digital transformation. Talk to us about that digital information, new capabilities, and also enhance efficiencies, mm -hmm. and also enhancing policy effectiveness. Awesome, thanks. Um, the Namibia School Information System, um, this is uh, 2.0, it's the second version. Uh, the first, uh, we, we did a pilot um, early on uh, in, in uh, this decade, uh, the previous decade, but uh, we were not very successful. But based on the lessons that we learned uh, with the Ministry of Education, uh, we were able to uh, work with the private sector. Uh, one of the um, uh, engagement strategy uh, in Namibia with the uh, for WFP I I with the government is to work with the private sector for long-term sustainability, which was one of the challenges that we saw with the previous um, um, uh, attempt. And uh, we have been able to develop uh, this platform. It is completed, uh, deployed uh, on government infrastructure, and uh, we are handing it over today to the Minister of Education. Uh, so this is a significant milestone because we've been able to overcome the previous challenges that uh, we experienced. Uh, the application digitalizes or, or um, uh, uh, transforms the manual operation of Namibia school feeding uh, into digital. Uh, we are, ex you know, we are expecting to 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 experience um, an, a enhanced uh, efficiencies and um, uh, effectiveness in terms of uh, collection of data. It's going to be more timely. Uh, the data is going to be more complete. Uh, Mr. Mopupa here, um, you know, uh, at some point uh, he may just be able to remove his phone and tell you how many kids fed yesterday. Uh, he can be able to tell you the procurement status uh, to, you know, in a school in Kunene. Uh, having this kind of information is very critical for decision makers and uh, you know uh, we're working together with, um, uh, with the ministry uh, in this journey as you've noticed it has started uh, since 1991 just to be able to help in the implementation of the, uh, of the program. So today uh, is a significant milestone. Uh, we've invited uh, multi-stakeholders from, uh, uh, from uh, international development to various uh, uh, participants uh, uh, or, or uh, collaborators of the Namibia School Feeding Program. Uh, we'll be launching it at the Comas Regional Council, the Community Hall. Um, very exciting, we'll be streaming it live in partnership with the uh, uh, Ministry of ICT, uh, who will be assisting in, in streaming it live. Uh, uh, please, uh, you know, join us in this from 9 o'clock to 11 o'clock. Uh, we'll be doing this and we can be able to learn more about uh, the solution and also the program. Okay. Now, how, how will this be implemented in Wildware that, you know, we do face the issue of digital divide in this country? Yes. How will that factor into, especially schools, schools that are in the remote areas that might not have the best in terms of when it comes to digital infrastructure, mm -hmm. my access to uh, sufficient network infrastructure, how will they be accommodated and ensure that they are not left out while trying to professionalize this service? Thank you for that question. Um, it's, it's a, this is a common challenge and um, um, digital transformation presents um, new capabilities of, of uh, being able to overcome some of these challenges. The technology that uh, we have implemented um, uh, in NASIS, uh, based also on the lessons that we learned, is that now we have uh, not only a web application but we have a mobile application which is able to support online and offline modes. Um, um, being able to, uh, you know, um, uh, have additional channels to be able to capture that data uh, even when you're not uh, online, it's something that uh, um, includes um, communities that are hard to reach or they are not um, advantaged in terms of the infrastructure. So uh, we have put this into into account, and uh, you know it's it's a it's a continuous learning process. And uh, with the partnership that we have here locally, uh, we will be able to overcome whatever challenges that we are facing. Um, you know, being able to be nimble, just to be able to uh, take in the feedback and uh, also overcome some of these challenges. So the technology that we have applied here uh, is able to overcome this. And um, like the strategy that I mentioned, just being able to work with the private sector for long-term sustainability, we're looking at partnering also with um, uh, suppliers uh, 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 in, the, um, like, uh, in the development um, 
in the private sector, for instance, uh, working with MTC can be very strategic so that um, uh, as they continue to be able to, to support uh, the government even in uh, developing uh, infrastructures in some of these hard to reach places. Okay. Now, Mr. Mupupa, as we begin to round up our conversation this morning, specifically for stakeholders that will be involved in this, why is it beneficial for them to be involved in this journey as now you move to digitalize this process? What will be some of the benefits? Okay. Um, nurses will be really uh, beneficial for us because, uh, uh, as, as we have indicated, we have struggled in the past to, to correct information that we need in order to coordinate better. So with this uh, um, nurses, uh, we are enhancing data correction. We are also enhancing program monitoring because as I have indicated, uh, we will be able to zoom in, in whatever region, in whatever circuit or school, to be able to see what is happening. For example, uh, we'll be able to, uh, to, to, to determine whether the school have been feeding their children over a period, and if not, what are the reasons? This, as long as the schools are operating the system with information, then we will be able to, to you know, to, to monitor better and be able to, you know, inst instead of us requesting information and waiting for some time for the colleagues in the region to respond to our request, we, we, we will ourselves have access to the information through the system because. Uh, uh, what is needed is for the schools to operate the system with the information. And uh, if those that do not have access to the internet, uh, maybe uh, uh, at the end of the week they access the internet and for the information to be uploaded on the website and for us, for us to be able to have access to whatever information uh, that we need. And the other is issue also enhancing visibility and uh, timelines of, of reporting. For us to be able to report uh, to our executives and other stakeholders, uh, this uh, system will allow us to do that because the information is just available, right, yeah, available. Uh, available at the, the fingertips. Okay. So, so these are some of the benefits that uh, NASIS will bring along and we are really excited. Okay, now unfortunately, gentlemen, we are out of time. Maybe if I can have your parting thoughts, let me start with you, Mr. Joab. Thank you. Um, I mean, we're inviting all Namibians to be able to, uh, you know, be with us through this uh, monumentous uh, event. Um, this is, uh, uh, we're continuing on the journey and uh, inviting all participants from uh, international development uh, to the smallholder farmers just to be able to appreciate, uh, you know, um, what you have been able to do and also uh, we're inviting them to continue uh, the support and the participation so that we can strengthen uh, this program and, uh, you know, benefit all learners so that no one is left behind. My closing remarks is actually to encourage Namibians to get involved with the school feeding program. It's actually a game changer for our children. Uh, given the current circumstances, economical circumstances that we find ourselves in, the impact of COVID-19, so, so many households do not have, you know, the capacities or to feed their children. But, uh, you know, uh, at school we are providing this meal so that these learners or these children are allowed to learn. So we believe that uh, no, no child should be hungry to learn and therefore we, we need support from all uh, uh, stakeholders so that we are able to maintain this program and uh, you know, allow these children an opportunity that they deserve to realize their academic potential. Okay. Well, gentlemen, thank you very much and we wish you all the best with uh, the launch later today. Thank awesome. you, sir.